From the LUTV Broadcast Center in Los Angeles, California, this is Brief News Brief, a brief look at today's trending news topics. Proudly combating the thought police since 2016, here's your host, James Heaney. I'm James Heaney, and this is your Brief News Briefing. Mitt Romney, the next senator from Utah, on Tuesday, Orrin Hatch, the longest-serving Senate Republican announced that he's going to retire at the end of the year. This is a flat rejection of President Trump's pleas that he stays in the Senate and runs for just one more eighth term. Orrin Hatch has held this seat since 1977. He's also emerged this year as a BFF to Trump, a staunch supporter, an avid loyalist. But Hatch released a video announcing his retirement, discussing how his old days as a boxer trained him to beat people to the punch in Washington. But it also taught him that he has to know, you know, when to hang up the gloves. Because you gotta know when to hold them. Know when to retire, because you're just not going to get reelected anyways. Does this pave the way for Mitt Romney, who has been a harsh critic of Trump since day one, to return to the world of politics? A political resurrection of sorts? And become the next senator of Utah? And what after that? I don't know. I don't know what happened. Romney has not confirmed. But we'll know more in the coming weeks. It does make me reminisce to a point in time of my life where I thought Mitt Romney being president would have been the worst thing in the world. Huh. To be young again. Sweet brah. Weed's not legal in California, dude. Two decades after the state approval for pot for medical use, it has now moved to allow marijuana statewide for recreational use. But the federal government continues to classify it as a controlled substance like heroin or LSD, because those are totally the same thing. Yet, despite the federal government, it's, illegal, it's legal here in California for adults 21 and older, and individuals can now grow up to six plants and possess as much as an ounce of the drug. Finding a retail outlet to buy non-medical pot in California, though, it won't be easy, at least not initially. Los Angeles and San Francisco are among the many cities where recreational pot will not be available right away because local regulations were not approved in time to start issuing city licenses needed to get state permits. <laughs> Meanwhile, Fresno, Bakersfield, and Riverside are among the communities that have adopted local laws forbidding recreational marijuana sales altogether. Ooh, well, let's all take a trip to Bakersfield. California originally banned a loco weed in 1913. The first attempt to undo that by voter initiative, it was in 1972, and that failed. Then, in 1996, California legalized medical marijuana. But now... Anyone can buy it, but buyer beware. The cost of retail pot could rise as much as 70% as taxes and fees raise the cost. And watch your wallet, because it might be cashed real quick. Some could argue that Ralph Nader has made the automobile industry safer through seatbelt regulations. One could argue that Donald Trump has made commercial aviation safer than it's ever been in the past. And that one, that one person that could argue that is Donald Trump. Donald Trump is taking credit for the statistic that 2017 was the safest year for commercial aviation on record. On Tuesday on Twitter, his typical way of speaking, he says, Since taking office, I have been very strict on commercial aviation. Good news! It was just reported that there were zero deaths in 2017. The best and safest year on record. <laughs> Clearly, he had been actively participating in monitoring the flight patterns and safety regulations. Wow! How can a guy have time to run the country, to golf more than any president in history, and keep on top of flight paths and safety? Wait a second, no? He's not been doing that? Well, then why is he taking credit for the good news? Currently, we do not have an on-staff psychologist at Brief News Brief to explain why he would take credit for something like that. But what are the facts? Well, there were 10 airline incidents that were fatal, and it resulted in 44 fatalities in 2017. So 44 deaths. That being the lowest number, which makes it the safest year on record. 
Fatalities in aviation have been declining steadily since 1997, attributed to the continuing safety-driven efforts by international aviation organizations. So, the thanks actually goes to ICAO and IATA, the Flight Safety Foundation and the aviation industry. Do I know what those letters specifically stand for? No! Jeez, you think I'm an encyclopedia? Put those letters in and you could look them up later. I-C-A-O, I-A-T-A. On Tuesday, Kim Jong-un of North Korea offered a chat with South Korea leaders ahead of next month's Winter Olympics that will be hosted in South Korea from February 9th to February 25th. So, it, first of all, let me, just, let me just break for a moment and say, isn't it odd that right after the Rio Summer Olympics, where people had to be vaccinated, be exposed to dirty water in order to swim, we're going to have the Winter Olympics in South Korea. And I'm not wishing that, but what, I mean, it's a place that there could be war breaking out in any moment. Anyways, the two nations may be meeting as early as next week. The offer of talks could lead to a temporary easing of tensions on the Korean peninsula. In a New Year's Day speech on Monday, Kim said he wanted to ease tensions with South. He said he was willing to send a delegation to the Olympics, suggesting that the two sides meet to discuss, you know, the idea. At the same time, he cautioned the Trump administration that his missiles could strike at any part of the United States. South Korean President Moon Jae-in sees the Olympics as a groundbreaking chance to improve ties and achieve peace. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham said that the United States should boycott the Olympics if North Korea attends. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to the Olympics either way. Period. You won't see me there. You can't pay me enough money to go into the Korean Peninsula right now during these hot tensions. And now for our favorite segment, the fluff piece. Why Welsh Terriers are the cutest dogs in the whole damn wo in the whole, whole one second. Breaking news. Okay, send the papers to me right now. All right, all right. Oh my goodness, this is a press release right from Donald Trump. We've got, we've got information. This is a, a direct quote from Donald Trump regarding Steve Bannon. I guess if you don't know about this, there was a book that just came out, and Steve Bannon said some pretty harsh words. Uh, I'm just going to be reading this first time. It's right in front of me. It's super breaking news, okay? <clears throat> this is Donald Trump. So, Steve Bannon has nothing to do with me or my presidency. When he was fired, he not only lost his job, he lost his mind. Steve was a staffer that worked for me after I had already won the nomination by defeating 17 candidates, often described as the most talented field ever assembled in the Republican Party. Now that he's on his own, Steve is learning what, that, that winning isn't as easy as I make it look. Steve had very little to do with our historic victory, which was delivered by forgotten men and women of this country. Yet Steve had everything to do with the loss of the Senate seat in Alabama held for more than 30 years by Republicans. Steve doesn't represent my base. He's only in it for himself. Steve pretends to be at war with the media, which he calls the opposition party. Yet he spent his time in the White House leaking false information to that media to make himself seem more, far more important than he was. It's the only thing he does well. Steve was rarely in one-on-one -on -one meetings with me and only pretends to have influence. <sighs> to fool enough of a few people with no accents and no clue to whom he helped write phony books. We have a great, great, many great Republicans of Congress and candidates who are very supportive of the Make America Great Again agenda. Like me, they love the United States of America and are helping to finally take our country back and build it up rather than simply seek to burn it all down. Wow. His words are poetic. <laughs> 